Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Come on now. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. 144. Um, we, a lot of times we get into the habit of, you know, thinking that praise is just fast, upbeat songs. And this, this song definitely has its, it'll get some, some tempo and some rhythm. But this was a song that Abba gave to me a few years ago. And I really love the first part. It's from Psalm 51. And it's may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing before you, O Yah, my rock and my redeemer. So we're going to learn some Hebrew today. So we're going to sing it in Hebrew first, and then we'll sing it in English. So we just pray that our, the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart are pleasing to you today, Abba. Oh 
clean oh, oh, oh yeah And renew a right spirit within me And cast me not away from your presence, oh yeah Take not your Holy Spirit from me Restore unto me The joy of my Yeshua And renew a right spirit within me Search me, O Yahweh and know my heart try me and know my every thought search me my Elohim find the hidden idols in me lead me in the way Hallelujah, Abba. Praise your name. All right, shalom, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about the armor of Yah, but we're going to do a little bit different. We're going to use um, two oranges and a bowl. So bear with me, okay? I don't really know what I'm doing, but I have an idea. I think this will work, so just, just bear with me, okay? So first, we uh, need some water. There we go. That's a lot better. So now that we have a word, let's talk about this. So you're familiar with the armor of Yah. If not, let's read it together in Ephesians chapter five, right? It says, Put on the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the adversary. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the dark darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of Elohim, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded up your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having ready your feet with all with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is Yah's word. Now, like we just read, the armor of Yah talks about the breastplate, the helmet. Now, a lot of these things, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think that this looks like a Roman soldier, when really, this actually looks more like a high priest, right? The ephod, the shoulder blades, that like all, all the different components that they have um, was put on top of the high priest to protect him when he went into the tabernacle to minister. We went inside of the holy place of the Day of Atonement in the most Kodesh place. So it's really, really interesting. But regardless, the point is, there is a spiritual armor that we need to put on every single day in order to combat the enemy, in order to walk in this world, in order to remain set apart and keep our mindset set apart. Right to be holy, to be Kodesh, set apart, and so in order to do that, so for us, we have to remember to put the armor on. So I want to give a visual um, illustration of what it looks like when we have our armor on versus what it looks like when we don't have our armor on. So let's take this bowl right here. All right, let's just say this bowl right here is the world. Right, there's a lot of stuff floating around in here. I probably wouldn't even drink this water. Right, I gotta go to the toilet. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't get to the toilet. What, bro? What are you talking about, man? But my point is. This bowl represents the world. Now, if you have your armor on, it's easy to make sure that you do not sink into this world. And this world can represent uh, depression. This world can represent hardship. This world can pre represent uh, comparison. So many different things, but we need to make sure that we stay armored up. We can make sure that we stay protected. And so um, for an example, let's take let's take this, this guy right here. We'll, uh, we'll call this guy, uh, I don't know, what should we call him? What is it? 
Jamal. Okay. We're going to call this guy Jamal. I don't, I don't know why Jamal looks like that, but that's, that's, that's Jamal. We'll give him a little bit of a goatee and a little curly cue for some hair, right? But that's Jamal. Now, he's he's looking a little weird, but here's the thing about Jamal. But we'll, we'll say this is Jamal. Now, Jamal, all oranges, like, you know, like they have this outer layer, this peel that protects the orange, right? It's almost like armor for the orange, so it can survive the elements, different bugs, and pests like that. When you keep the peel on the orange, I don't know if you know this, oranges float. Come check this out. All right, here you go. So here's a closer look at this orange floating right here. As you can tell, oranges float in the water when they have this shell on, when they have this peel around the orange. You know, it's you can keep trying to sink it, but nothing's going to happen. It's going to keep floating back to the top. And I feel like this a lot. This speaks to what it's like to have your armor on. When you put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. When you have the sword of the spirit, the shoes of peace. When you have these things on, it's hard for you to sink into what this world has going on. It's hard for it to scare you. And you can still kind of look creepy like Mr. Like, like Jamal here is what we call this guy. Now, here's the other thing, though. If you happen to take the armor off, which it's something weird that takes place. So watch, we're gonna take this off right now. Hopefully I do this right and not embarrass myself. We're gonna take all this armor off piece by piece. And I feel like the hardest times in our life, it feels like this, right? It's ripping literally the skin off our bones sometimes. Uh, whether you get into a fight with your brother or your sister or, or there's work, whatever the case may be. But when you take the armor off and you go ahead and put it in here, you know what, the armor even holds you together, which is crazy. But when you take it off, it sinks. And all of a sudden, oranges cannot float. The orange itself wasn't keeping it afloat. The peel, the peel, the armor, the armor was the thing that was making that orange float, which is crazy. So sometimes we have to remember that when we keep our armor on, it allows us to stay afloat in this world versus when we take it off, we sink to the bottom, just like this. Now, the real question is, how am I gonna get this out and eat it? Because this is about to be the soggy orange. We're gonna waste food in my house. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to get it out. But my point is, can you see the similarity here? When we keep our armor on us, it allows us to float. It allows us to stay above the crowd, to stay above the waves. And even as life kind of moves and wobbles, we're able to move and be fluid and nimble instead of sinking. We don't sink to the bottom. We don't drown by the worries of this life, right? It kind of reminds me of uh, some scripture where it talks about how uh, the word can be choked by the worries of this world, but it can be as long as we remain with our armor on. We have our armor on, doesn't matter how far, how, how hard we fall, it's impossible to sink. So today, keep your armor on. If you want to explain what it's like to have your armor on versus not, feel free to take this. Take this. I found this online. I thought it was a cool idea. I thought it was a cool demonstration. So remember, keep your armor on so you don't you don't sink. But try not to make a creepy face like, like Jamal here. It's terrifying. Anyway, Shabbat Shalom. See, see you next week.